Living Heaven on Earth. My name is Cornelia Stephanie. I'm your host, and I want to acknowledge what today is. Today's date is March 20th, 2020. Happy Spring Equinox. And really, in my belief, it's the beginning of the new year, because I believe that the new year begins in the springtime. And so who would have ever thought that we are at beginning the new year with this whole spiritual warfare that we're finding ourselves in, this, this uh, pandemic of crisis that we're finding ourselves in right now. And so this show, Heaven on Earth, is created to offer support and offer tools in navigating the changes for the world, because many of us have been in training for a long time to be the anchors. And just like you're gonna see us talk about this on the show today with our guests that we have on that my beautiful co-host Hummingbird Jewel is gonna introduce us to in just a little while. But I want to also let the audience know for those of you that are tuning in just now for the first time, I saw a video yesterday uh, from Greg Braden and Greg Braden is, a, is a, a magnificent scientist, and he's been doing this work for 30 years. And he put together a presentation slide of the, the virus, what it, what it does in the body, how it got started, and this whole thing. And so I'm going to put the link for those of you that want to have something positive to look at, for those of you science people that love to see you know, the science part behind it, I'm gonna put it in this link so that you can um, share this with your friends because it was really enlightening to see from a scientific perspective of what it does in the physical body. And the other thing I wanna say, you know, in my own awakening to remembering journey of who I am, the spiritual warfare that's happening on the outside of the planet is offering us the opportunity to heal the war within. And really right now it offers us the time to go within and look at all the places that the imbalance that we're finding ourselves in, that we can bring love, that we can bring peace, that we can bring harmonious energy to everything in our life that hasn't yet been healed and, and, and looked at and acknowledged. So my beautiful co-host, Hummingbird Jewel, for the last eight shows, she's been bringing us the spiritual loss. And also part of that has been to offer a support system right now for the Awakening Collective because it's, we're talking about a spiritual warfare. You know, this is, this is really the time. So what beautiful spiritual law do you have for us today, Hummingbird Jewel? Hello, everybody. It's Julia Hummingbird Jewel. I'm so glad y'all are here to join us. And this month, uh, my divine guidance said the law of correspondence. And, you know, everything just kind of connects together because I was also trying to figure out who was going to be my guest, and I was asking for that to come. And so when they uh, asked me to choose Peter Hansen, uh, I was really excited when he um, accepted. And then, of course, I started to do the research on the law of correspondence and how it all flows together. It's just so yes. beautiful. And, you know, everything just kind of. So um, the law of correspondence basically says that, you know, uh, what's within us is what we project in the outside. So what our pro uh, do primary dominant thoughts are is what we'll convey on the outside. And I remember when I was in a really dark phase in my life, it was in my 30s, I was drinking a lot and I was, I called myself the king of pain. Can you believe that? And of course, what was my life like? You know, it was painful. And so when I was studying this law and it, and it was talking about, you know, connecting to the oneness and the super conscious mind, um, I just thought, what a, what a beautiful law to have um, in correlation with our guest, Peter Hansen. And so you can read this blog. It's in, I go into great detail on my website, hummingbird-jewel.com or on my Facebook page. I have it posted to my 
uh, page is open to the public and did Julia Rogers, or you can just Google, um, put in Facebook search Hummingbird Jewel. But I would like to introduce our guest. But wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Before we do that, I would like to know a little bit about the spiritual law of correspondence. We're going what, to talk what, about that with Peter after I introduce him. I was going to ask him to speak to Oh, it. because normally in the past, what we've done is you you and I would talk about the show, I mean, about the law, but that's fine if that's yeah. how we're going to do it. Great. Because I, like I want Peter to speak to it because it has so much to do with about what he what he's about. That's what okay, I'm going gotcha. to Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so Peter Hansen was born in Denmark and raised in Denmark, and he'd always felt strong angelic presence, but his spiritual upbringing in Denmark was kind of like limited to, you know, Christmas and holidays um, and such. But what happened to him in his 20s is that he got into a horrific car accident and he didn't have his seatbelt on. And subsequently, he spent 10 days in a Coma. And during that time, he went through a near-death experience. And Peter talks about going up in this elevator where he connects to the divine oneness and the angelic realms. And then after that experience, he immigrated to California and underwent development of connecting to his multidimensional body, his higher self, and his psychic abilities. And he received a spiritual gift to channel Archangel Gabriel, who came through with great clarity. And it was then he stepped into his role as a professional healer and aligned with his purpose in this lifetime. So Peter's mission is, I am here to anchor divine life, serve humanity as a spiritual ascension guide on this earthly plane to empower others on their path and to heal those in need of a transmutation of energy from dark to light. Welcome to the show, Peter. Thank you, Hummingbird Jewel, and thank you, Cornelia. I'm very excited to be here, and what an introduction. I couldn't have said it any better myself. It's like oh, you've done your homework, I like that. Yeah, yeah. So the reason I wanted to introduce you, I wanted you to come into this law of correspondence because when I was writing it, I just felt you so much because you're always speaking to the collective. Can you talk a little bit about the collective? Absolutely. Uh, you know, our journey back to our soul is, is coming from the separation of the human into the oneness. So uh, that's what I do with Ascent and Guidance with most of my clients and, and my whole being uh, as you become at service, it's not about just choosing to be at service once in a while. It's like you're becoming at service all the time. So that's what you're picking up on, that I'm speaking to the whole because I'm a part of the whole. So the more I can encourage and uh, engage with people in, in, in that consciousness um, and guide others to do the same, the faster we all are going to get there, so to speak. You know, It's about it's the common goal, the bigger picture. And... And the consciousness of, of uh, living outside of separation, all about oneness coming together in love and unity, uh, which is, we are going through a phase right now where uh, a lot of people are struggling uh, in many ways, but this is, is actually allowing everybody to show down and slow down and, and make that inner connection with the higher self. Yeah. This is a great opportunity to connect to that higher consciousness and not being distracted by all this outside uh, distractions uh, and it really it's it's a it's a fast track to to bring the collective to the next level and this is many people don't see it this way yet um, I see it this way, way and, and many other spiritual people like myself I noticed that we're actually very excited about what's happening right now it, because we know this is for the highest good it feels really good not the death not the struggles not the fear not the everything but the bigger picture it is bringing us closer together and it is uh, getting rid of all the dense energies around us, getting us back to the core uh, love, unconditional love frequency and vibration that we all coming from before we came into a physical body. So it's the journey back to self. Yeah. And in my article, uh, the biggest thing that came to me was questioning. We all need to ask, who am I? And I started thinking about, okay, who am I? Am I my mind? Am I my thoughts? No, no, I'm not my ego. I'm not my mind. Am I my subconscious mind? No, but my, I love my subconscious mind. It runs my body. You know, I am 
soul or am I, am I my physical body? No, I'm not my physical body, but I am soul, you know, and it gets you to go, I am awareness. I am the observer. And it was just very interesting to me how that, you know, corresponded with that law of really looking into who we are and all the different facets of us and, and integrating it. You know, our ego isn't our enemy. I call it ego my e amigo. Um, but to really try to work from soul. So, yeah. I love the way you put that because it's really about, you know, the mind is conditioned and it is it's relying on history and then past occurrences where the heart is, is in real time. Yeah. So and it's coming from feelings. So it's really about what are we listening to? Are we listening to the higher self, the higher consciousness? Are we listening to the old programming? Yes. Uh, this is that big opportunity to negate the dense energies and, and allowing ourselves to be in the higher frequency where everything is vibrating faster and allowing us to gain access to higher consciousness by being and, and shining uh, brighter and, and wider. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing. And this is where simplicity is coming into the picture. We made it so difficult for ourselves before as we're coming into the higher self um, and, and vibrating in the higher frequency and the angelic range, it becomes simpler and simpler because there's not all these things that need to be done out there because it's all emanating from within. So when we have the inside right, everything out there will be a reflection of it not a we're not going to be a response or a, a product of the environment yeah exactly that's why I, want, I didn't want to speak to the you know what's going on in the world today i wanted to speak to love you know because if we focus on that instead of all the other stuff it's just gives us a break you know and people like cornelia who know how to help others transmute some of their th stuff like you know she's a beautiful coach and an example of doing that i do that work myself you do so there's people out there to help us right cornelia absolutely and i you know i agree with what both of you are saying and i also feel the excitement peter of what you're talking about is that this excitement of the new beginnings that are occurring and that really you know this this time period that we're in right now we've been waiting for the opening of all of this and in training for this for a long time. I would like to ask you a little bit more about your near-death experience. I find that so interesting. I lead a women's group and last night, one of the ladies that was there, she also ended up moving into her spiritual gifts through a near-death experience. And do you feel like this near-death experience that you had, do you feel like that was the beginning of the opening to bring you more into communion with your spiritual gifts and the archangel. Absolutely. And it's, it's as you know, you grow spiritually and you learn what's going on and you see the bigger picture. You, you notice that certain things are being removed from your life or in your path to open up other doors and to bring you on the right path, so to speak. And this was the biggest one at that time. Uh, at the time, I didn't know that 100% that that was what it really was happening. But in retrospect, I see it now that it's undeniable. Um, it was just so profound and so, you know, uh, I mean, it was life changing. It really was, you know, it was, of course, my body went through a, a big trauma. But me having that insight and getting it guidance and, and just trusting it 100% since that day or that time, pretty much, I just learned to listen and follow you know, that you can't see, that you can't see with your eyes, you know, but you know it, that knowing, trusting, feeling, calling that inner guidance from source energy or spirit, soul, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, is that, you know, when you really, really know and you follow that and always follow the feeling, then you know everything's going to be okay and you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be, where you're supposed to be doing it. You're shining your light and you bring that with you and you help activating other people to do the same for themselves and for others. Yeah, well, do you think that this was a wake-up call for you as what we're experiencing right now on planet Earth, a wake-up call for people that are experiencing, you know, severe challenges? In many ways, yes. Uh, I do see that. There's, there's two ways of looking at it. That's the thing. I mean, uh, in oneness, there's no separation. But depending on what you look at, if you're looking at, you know, this is opportunity for growth, or you're looking at this is, uh, you know, everything's going to go bad, you know, then 
it's a very different energy and and that's the feeling when you learn to let go of the need to have live in separation and you pick what feels right then you notice that there's so much support there and then the whole universe is is transpiring with you right now because this is what we're going through right now it is kind of like the oceans are separating not because there's a right and wrong or somebody is, is, is not deserving. It's really about everybody have their own journey. So some chose to, you know, exit a certain way or being a part of the one side of it. And, and the other people decided to expand and, and ascend through, you know, this experience in the physical body and, and be a part of the, the new world, um, the revelations, the, the rebirth, the emergence of the new world. It's like it's, there's so much excitement happening. Uh, and they all had to be removed for that to be able to occur. And this is really the easiest way for that to happen. If you look at it that way, people are being separated out. So there's not, you're not feeling everybody else's energy the same way as if you're working in big groups together. Yes. Thank you for that. Thank you're you. Welcome. Yeah. So, so Peter, can you just talk to us? Because sometimes, uh, especially if you're going to channel at the end, our show will just end. Can you just speak a little bit to your website and what programs you offer and how you counsel and help other people? I think you have a mentorship program or something, right? I do. And I actually do 50, well, I would say even more than 50% of my clients are mentorship clients because there's such a big need for it. It's, it's really about consistency. Uh, having somebody who done the work and can guide you all that mountaintop uh, and hold your hand because there's uh, many ups and downs throughout that journey. You can work on yourself one week and then you wait another month. You go up high and you go down low. But what I do, I, I guide people from week to week to week, uh, usually one hour sessions once a week, okay. uh, clearing any old dense energies of programming, you know, integrating new uh, gifts that they didn't have access to fully knew how to use before uh, and, and, integrating that in everyday life and, and becoming self-sufficient it's really about you know learning your gifts trusting them learning how to use them and just that's a part of living heaven on earth really that you are not a victim you're not a product of the outside you you, you can change it within you can shift that energy yeah. by becoming that generator you know energy generator but also you can change it you can shift it at any time you are the creator yes yes that's how it all like you know kind of went in with the law of correspondence and i saw everything that you were doing and i was just like oh it just seems to tie it all in together with that let me ask you a question um so I, the last spiritual law was law of gender and i understand we all have male and female aspects even in our human bodies but are angels genderless because i had always thought of gabriel our, he's always been my favorite uh, as this, you know, warrior angel and my protector. And then my um, ladies that did the letters from the afterlife, they got a letter from Archangel Gabriel and it was women. And so do you see the angels as men or women or do you see them as no gender? They are genderless on the other Everybody is genderless on the other side. But it's interesting because it is a real question for a lot of people because depending if you're looking from the human mind that look at everything in separation, there's a right and there's a wrong, right. there's duality, then there has to be either, you know. But when you come into the mind or you're coming into, and not the mind, sorry, the spirit and soul, the higher consciousness, there's no, it's both are right, you know, and, <laughs> and access to both. You know, when you go high enough, the same with the archangels or any, any angels, you know, when you go high enough in frequencies and dimensions, they all come into the same light as are we. Uh, so separate at the lower frequencies, lower dimensions coming into a higher light as we uh, ascend or, you know, ascend into higher dimensions. I hope that answered the question. Yes, yes, it did. <laughs> and so with Archangel Gabriel, I remember one time I was in a chat group. I was really younger. Um, and somebody kind of got on me there. Like, he's, like, he's like, Archangel Gabriel, have you read the Bible? He's, a, you know, he's killed and all these people. And I hadn't read the Bible then. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, you know. <laughs> and so do you see him as a warrior or a, do you just, how do you see him? Is he a divine being or i've always kind of felt that he's like the strongest like of the archangels but that was just maybe my you know girl perception of it or my you know experience i always felt like he was my protector do you see him in that way or how do you see archangel gabriel 
I see him in, in both ways you're, you're describing there. You know, he's the brother of, of Michael, so he's his right hand. Uh, they are best buddies, you know, and they do a lot of things together. Uh, okay. I seen and I, I was a part of that uh, embodiment with, with Gabriel at the time was all the gifts were coming back, the shields, the armor, the swords, uh, the dragon even. <laughs> uh, and there was a need for it, and there's still a need for it at times. And remember, it's important to remember, uh, like source energy and like our higher self when we come into the oneness we are all places at all places at one time so he can be going at war one place or fighting you know dense energies or old belief systems or old uh, whatever we want to call them you know anything that was holding us back from ascending and then the earth's development into the, you know what we're coming into now uh, at the same time as he can nurture and and become the messenger because he's also working in the dream state with a lot of people uh, coming in, giving guidance, uh, nurturing, and it's on and on. There's so many missions for uh, specifically for Gabriel that's really interesting that he's so diverse and, and helping in so many ways. So yes, he has an armor, you know, he has a sword and it's being used in many different ways. It could be used to cord cutting, it could be used to be fighting or removing anything that needed to be removed. Um, that was placed in in, in the way for yeah. the sentence running. So, well, I I I love how you're you know explaining this, and also in my belief system, is there is also you know because you I heard you mention the oneness in oneness there is no separation, and we've we've never been separate from our source. It's we were healing the the parts of ourselves that have been separate, that have been feeling separate, right? Because the oneness has been there all along. And so when we're when we're talking about Archangel Gabriel, I mean uh, Raphael, do you believe, do you feel that you are also an aspect of Raphael as well? Is that an aspect of you in the oneness? Uh, Gabriel, yes. Uh, Gabriel? Yes. Uh, but, you know, I can tune into any, if I work with clients, I can tune into any of them. Mm -hmm. If that's what they want to, I can tune into uh, Jesus as well. Uh, and other, you know, deities. So it's really, you're not limited. It's, it's really about what, what you learn to tune yourself, your consciousness and your frequency into, because then you can transmit that frequency and you can channel that uh, from a channeler standpoint. You know, we all channeling, so we all, you know, gaining these gifts back, uh, everybody, if being aware of it or not, it's a part of us becoming an uh, embodiment of, of God or, or the higher source energy, your soul, the oneness. Yeah, and do you, do you feel that you are an aspect of the energy that you're channeling, like in the oneness of all? You know, I because I channel source energy, so I I feel at one with source. I feel at one with what it is that I'm channeling, the information that I'm bringing forth, and so I feel that I am an aspect of what I'm. I'm, you know, all of it because even on Earth here is every person is a mirror. It's all a mirror. Everything is a mirror because there's only oneness, right? And so I. That's what I was trying to find out: is do you also feel like you are an aspect of the energies? that you're channeling. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. Absolutely, this is like, it could be a future self, it's, it's from, you know, a different dimension that's coming back to help and guide us. Yes, yes, wonderful, wonderful. Well, uh, I know that uh, it's time for us to take a break here on the show, Living Heaven on Earth. I'm with Hummingbird Jewel and Peter, mm -hmm. and we're going to take a break and then we'll come right back and we'll continue on in this fabulous conversation. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Cornelia Stephanie Show. I'm with my co-host, Hummingbird Jewel. And sometimes I wish the audience could hear the conversations that we have during break time because there's really such golden nuggets in there that we should uh, sometimes make that public as well. So Jules, do you want to now continue on with uh, um, talking to Peter about the next phase? Sure, sure. Um, one thing I was would like to speak to, I think all of us would like to speak to it, is you're, we're always talking about keeping our frequency up, you know, so that we do reflect, you know, what's inside. So how would you recommend, Peter, that people keep their vibrancy up and their frequency up right now? What do you do to keep yours 
you know, on that higher track? It's a daily commitment. It's a 24 seven job. It's a lifestyle. It's really about, you know, nature is a perfect example and a, and a, you know, it's a God given, of course, you know, like it's a tuning fork, so to speak, like getting into mm -hmm. nature is one of the most important things to me you know, personally. And then of course, light and love, um, and really listening, learning to listen and being one with you uh, and, you know, engage with others from that consciousness and being. Uh, but really what it comes down to is we're becoming tuning forks. You know, we're tuning our frequency every day. We might wake up from a dream state where we were processing a past lifetime that needed to go and it might have been traumatic and you might wake up with a little bit, a bit of, you know, dense energy or anxiety or maybe it was a collective template you, was, you were clearing. Uh, so tuning yourself in the morning through meditation, listening to uh, binary tones, singing balls, music that's supporting our frequency uh, mm -hmm. rising into a higher frequency and consciousness uh, is big ones but also whatever you put into your body uh, yeah. being food being no tv in my case you know uh, no news i i don't follow any of that uh, very minimum even if i'm hearing from other people i try to not react or be a part of it or, or create a timeline that that even exists uh, so that's that's many things about what we're allowing into our energy field and that's how we rise our vibration. And then you see everybody around us start to showing up in that similar frequencies because that's what you're sending out. So that's what you're going to get back. Exactly. You know, it's been so fun. I used to be an avid juicer. I always would get about 12 or 15 vegetables and I'd make these juice bags and I'd juice every day. And then I just kind of fell off the juicing. But this last, I guess, about five or six days ago, they're like juice and it has to be green juice, which is not really the best. <laughs> so I thought, well, I'll just do it every other day. You know how you try to wiggle out from, you know, your gut. <laughs> but I've been doing it every day, and it's like a big glass of green juice. And <laughs> it's not that bad, but that's all I'm having during the day now. And I'm eating one meal. So, and then also drinking distilled drinking water, they're telling me to do. But it's kept me kind of, you know, pretty pumped up. <laughs> But, you know, that's what I'm kind of doing. Of course, I listen to frequency music. And um, and also I heard get outside because I was like in my office, you know, like <laughs> it was like out, get outside. <laughs> I was like, OK. <laughs> so I just went out and I just laid the sun, you know, and just felt the sun, sun on me. And just those simple things, you know, pet the cat. <laughs> well, as you know, too, when you do meditate and you, you're fully coming into this sweet spot where there's no, you know, it's a zero point energy, there's no chatter, there's no, it's just this pure, you know, source connection, that vibration. And then when you come into your daily work after that, coming from the energy, you go straight into it. You know, it's already done, so to speak, like telepathically, you already send it out these signals. So everything just unfolds perfectly. I noticed, you know, when a personal, uh, experience that the logical mind is not able to put in all these obstacles and all these diversions and, and uh, separation so you just go straight to source and you get straight up back on your path and everything that's just beautiful. unfolds so faster yeah that's beautiful you know for the last five years i've been channeling source messages 10 minutes a day in the mornings and i would put them into a text into a wordpress and then i put um, voice behind it and then I created a membership and so that people would have a, a way to start the day with the positivity, with the positive messages and align themselves to their I am, to their divinity, to their true divine nature. And like you said, it's a lifestyle. It's not something that we just do, you know, one time. It's something, you know, on the ascension path, on this ascension timeline, it takes so much consciousness, so much love, so much kindness, so much compassion to continuously keep doing that inner work and release the outside world. I call it the old world so that we can give birth to the new world. It's just, you know, keeping it simple, old world, new world, old world consciousness, new world consciousness, because we are the world. It's our kingdom. It's our, it's our earth, right? Absolutely. Yeah, Cornelia, Cornelia is a great example of always having that she has this beautiful morning process and then she gets out in nature and, and she's just, she has it down. She really does. And her, her messages that she does. 
I just think for a lot of us that are at home and we're not used to having time to do that, you know, we just get up and then we're having to get the kids off the school and we make our lunch and then we're driving in our car. So now you have time to, you know, kind of download and take some, do some morning um, things that might help you stay in that great frame of mind of, and of maybe even of being of service to others, which is my big deal. I love that. You know, I, I've been trying to help people and they're just like, I'm just so anxious. And I'm like, why don't you go help somebody, you know, help anybody. Even if you're just doing a nice Facebook post, just pick out anybody and, and give of yourself. Cause that just, you know, really raises your frequency. Cause that, you know, being an example of love, right? Well, you do a lot of giving, yeah. uh, Julia, because you've got all your organizations that you're continuously, um, you know, donating generously to and your time and your money and your energy. So it's a wonderful way to, again, connect and raise the frequency and be, you know, in our humanity. Because one of the things I'm noticing right now is how many people people are enjoying each other and how people are reaching out. I'm, I'm seeing what's good here. What's good. What's good. What's good. I'm seeing yeah. all these people come together and it's really magnificent to see uh, the human spirit come together in a place of crisis and something new will be born. I'm, I'm just amazed at seeing people's connection right now. Families playing in the park, uh, families coming together, people walking together, you know, um, reaching out, offering, doing random acts of kindness. It's so, funny you said that. Oh, sorry. Um, oh, go ahead, go ahead. That's one thing I noticed too that, and I'm, of course, uh, an old, old, my own testament of it too, is that, you know, we can only answer for ourselves and focus our energy on, on being at service and helping. Uh, and not, you know, like the human self would wait for something out there to be a certain way before we could do the next step. It doesn't work that anymore. We've all been waiting for this to be at service, you know. So when we do, and we, no matter of what everybody else is doing, because it's just continue to, you know, uh, work ahead and continue to be the highest version of ourselves and, and putting ourselves uh, out there and being at service, the more you will see everybody else being, you know, transmuted and transformed by that. You know, we're not waiting for anything else to shift or, you know, there's no requirements, there's no attachments, there's no, you know, obligations or anything, you know, it's just we're giving from the goodness of our heart. That's so true. Love energy, you know? Yeah. And Peter, where are you from? Where, where I'm, from you? I'm from Denmark, the happiest place on earth or happiest people on earth, they say sometimes. <laughs> That's so awesome. It's, I, I love your accent. It's beautiful. And uh, I love the message. I love the consciousness. I love what you're sharing. I love, you know, I love seeing um, the masculine energy uh, in this form, having this beautiful open heart, and that are sharing these amazing uh, gifts with us. And in 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 balance, I feel you really in balance with your masculine and feminine energies. And so I trust that. And I love the fact that you're offering mentorship sessions or mentorship community. And is, is that community men and women? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You know, it doesn't matter if you're men or women, we're all gonna go through it. So it's, it's, it's really about, you know, letting go of that old masculine, the old male linear uh, dualistic self, and then coming in through the divine feminine in men and in women, and then co-create with the divine masculine learning how to have access to both and find that balance and expand from that space, you know, and that's funny. You mentioned Denmark, you know, if you Google Danish men, you know, it does equality is so high because we grew up like we both taking part of the daily chores and this is how I grew up, you know, so that's normal. In many other parts of the world, it's not like that. So it's, easy. I mean, it prepped me for where I'm at now, you know, definitely. Well, it's the Europeans, you know, I, I was born and raised in Germany. I came to this country when I was 13 years old. I didn't, wasn't speaking. English was not my second, my first language, but I have, I have uh, my, my values and my ethics of, you know, working hard and, you know, how the Germans are raised. So it's a European thing. You know, I think we have a strong work ethic. Yes. Yeah. So Peter, how do we get signs from our angels and, um, do they, do you believe in like people seeing feathers or, or numbers? Like when I started to see the one, one, one and the one, 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 
I was just so skeptical about that. I just thought it was a bunch of bull and I kept seeing it over and then I was annoyed by it. And then I kind of had like a supernatural experience with those numbers and that really woke me up. I was like, okay. And so I, to me, they mean, they mean angels. And so then the other day when I was on the treadmill and I'm on my Facebook, like I do listen to my music and all of a sudden it was 11, 11 and you emailed me. You know, you messaged me, you know, like at exactly 11, 11. So do you believe that there's a correspondence between these numbers? Because now I'm seeing 333 three, three all the time. I don't know why. Do you, is that a wink from the universe or what's your take on that? Absolutely. You know, it is, again, it's, it's another version of ourselves or like placing breadcrumbs for ourselves uh, and giving <laughs> us that, you know, uh, guidance. And, and but, but when you shift from the human you know, consciousness into the higher consciousness as well, that's when you disbelieve. So it's about, you know, shifting yourself into believing and trusting. So it's a big part of that too. And for individuals, certain numbers can mean different things. Like 111 for you could be different for me uh, or 333. But basically what it is, it's just a reminder that, you know, you're on the right path, you're doing the right thing in the right frequency without having to overthink it from like the logical mind would like to always figuring out why. <laughs> you know? So just trusting, but also you can learn to program numbers too. It's like I, when I see a 311, 411, 611, 711, whatever it is, I tap my right leg and I know, okay, I got a new client. So I program that into be, okay, there's a new client. You, you can take it to the next level. So you're not just observing, but you're actually learning to program these numbers into That's something that you would like to experience or something you would like to manifest. That's beautiful. Do you think everybody has a guardian angel? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> we have a whole team. We have a whole team of guides, archangels, guardian angels, uh, galactic brothers and sisters of the light. We fully protected and connected and the thing is we are already it's already existent it's just our journey to fully come into that consciousness and experience it fully i love what you said about the numbers programming the numbers and uh really you know i can tell that you are a true teacher and leader by what you're saying because you keep putting it back onto the person to define it for themselves, which means that that's, the, that's really truly the message of true empowerment. When you can really put it back on each person, discovering for themselves what something means to them and that they can be the authority in their own life and that whatever it means to them, this is what I hear you saying and I love that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely love that. Love that. So are you going to be doing uh, a little channel channeling for us? Because we have another break left. And then maybe when we come back from break, would you, is that what you're going to do? Absolutely. If, if you have a theme or any questions you want to answer, then maybe think about it during the break. Uh, and okay. we can specifically target that. Or if you have a broad, you know, theme, then we, we get a broad answer or whatever's coming through. I have, I have something I'd, I'd like, and I'll, I'll tell you on the break and then we can, okay. we can decide maybe Julia has something she wants to bring in. And uh, if, if the audience is out there, you guys can call us at 1-800-930-2819 and let us know if you have something that you want us to have Peter uh, bring you some answers for 1-800-930-2819. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. We're back on the Cornelia Stephanie show with Hummingbird Jewel. And we were in the break. We were talking about what is the, the uh, question that we want to pose to Peter to channel the archangel uh, Gabrielle and uh, ask this question and let's just see what comes out. One of my questions that I've been having talking with a lot of people that are afraid of the money, the financial system and what's happening. There's a lot of fear around money. People are afraid of spending money. They're afraid of will they have enough resources. So my question is, what is your guidance coming through, Peter? Uh, what What is it that you can tell us about that? Let me just tune in. Let me bring in the Legion of Angels first. Uh, Archangel Gabriel's Legion of Angels. And I'm asking them to remove any wandering spirits or anything that's not a delight from this transmission, from this uh, gathering. 
I'll just allow your acting to Gabriel to fully come in and channel through me. So to answer your question uh, about the money concerns, um, it really comes down to trust. Uh, the old mind, uh, like was mentioned earlier, Peter was talking about, um, is always looking for something to be missing or something to be fixed or something to be on the outside. So it's when you're coming in, uh, you start living from this oneness by being forced to not being able to control any of the elements uh, at work. That's when we learn to uh, surrender and allowing uh, help to come to you in unexpected ways. And the more you do that, the more you trust, the more everybody take a breather and allow everything to be reconfigured because there's so much going on behind the veil. Uh, not only that, but also that when you are in a consciousness uh, of abundance or non-lack, that's when you're open to receive it. So everybody's being forced to slow down and stop right now. So this will be the product of that, that everything will be, everybody will be supported in unexpected ways. Programs will be coming into place. Money will come in, in very unexpected ways or any kind of resources or uh, abundance needed at the, at the present moment at all times. This is important. It's not about uh, creating a, a treasure chest. This is about, having all your needs met at all times. And when you learn to live in that space and always being moving, then you will learn how that works, that when, when you are always moving and everything is always provided for you, there is no lack. Nothing has to change. You're just continuously uh, in the flow of life. You're in the flow of source energy and the sacred geometry of the universe. Uh, and angels, guides, any way you know you individually would like to you know receive that is, is all valid you know there could be novelty there could be safety there could be whatever is needed at the time depending on where everybody is on their ascension journey um, so remember it can come in any way shape or form it can come through other family members it can come through the system it can come through there's many ways it's really coming down to trusting and being a receptor for the abundance. Uh, if there's any other questions, please uh, ask them now. Julia, how do we connect to divine oneness at this time and to just experience heaven on earth and to center, to balance, to come together as one? Good question. Before everything went out this way, everything was like relying on the eyes or the physical body, the physical uh, humans, go up, go in, learn to channel through your crown chakra, go up to the collective consciousness, because that is where all the oneness is and where there's no lack, there is total abundance, anything and everything is available. So don't overthink it, but tap into the collective consciousness, because this is what we all come from and where we or going again it's already existing so it's really about you learning to trust and tune in this is something that most people have not been taught so you go in you send out a signal this is what i want to receive and you wait uh, meaning not from the physical self waiting and won't be able to move but you send out a rocket of desire and you allow the universe to bring it to you in the fastest and best way possible and there's no limits to how many requests you can put out or in different uh, ways or shapes and forms. The learning to, to ask, but no expectations attached to it. Come from the oneness, what's best for the whole, not from individual uh, entities or separation mentality. Beautiful. Mm. Everything's going to be okay. Uh, it's important that people... Uh, Find that peace within because that is where it's found. It's, it's not out there. It's important to remember, you know, look within. Allow yourself to slow down. When you fully surrender to the process of, of the divine and, and you are being an embodiment of the divine, then nothing out there has to change. So you're learning just to be okay because the heart is already perfect. It's already nothing has to change for it to love unconditional. So coming into that space and knowing there's a purpose to us being here at this time is very grand. This is like mastery. This is a huge experience of soul's uh, 
growing and graduating and, and fully embodying the highest version of themselves in the physical body, making that transition in the physical. So this is a magical time to be alive. So the more we can be in, in that magic, the more we're going to experience it. And looking at the world that way, looking at all the gifts and all the miracles and all the wonderful ways that people are actually coming together within this. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Raphael, for bringing us this beautiful, beautiful truth. When you hear the truth, you know the truth, it's true. It resonates on every uh, cell, in every cell in your being. It's wonderful uh, meeting you and uh, hearing how you are impacting and influencing the world with your beauty, with your gifts, with your divinity. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hummingbird Jewel, for bringing us beautiful Peter. And thank you, audience, beloved you, for tuning in to the Cornelia Stephanie Show every Friday at 12 noon. We'll see you all again next time. Thank you, everyone.